Basically, what we have here, church, is false teachers rebuking false teachers. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how Isaiah Saldivar and Mark Driscoll are even worse than the sword swallower himself. That just sounds weird to say. Sword swallower. Sus. Sus. All right. So this is Alex Magala. Yes, this is the guy who did the sword swallowing. Um, every time I say that word, just it, it is sus. It is sus. And uh, John Lindell is in the wrong, too. This is John Lindell, the pastor of James River Church. He's in the wrong because he allowed this mess in the church. He's saying, oh, this is just art. This is just art. This is acrobatics. Uh, no, it's not just acrobatics. Um, and this is Isaiah Saldivar. Before he was like, Matthew 18, go on private, go on private, go on private. But he, like when people call him out, he doesn't want people to like expose him or whatever. He's like, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. You should go on private. But in this situation, now we can call it out. I'm going to show you all he's a hypocrite. And then we got Pastor Mark Driscoll right here. And I'm going to show you how he's a hypocrite as well. They're all hypocrites. They're all in the wrong. But there's a lot going on. I'm usually getting to the news late, y'all, because I literally have a full-time job. And therefore, a lot of these people who do this, who you see the videos from, who are big on YouTube, this is all they do. So they can get to the news quickly. I'm getting to it late. You probably already know what happened and all that. But to give y'all some background, I'm going to let Isaiah Saldivar show you. We're going to start with his video. Let me do this. So Mark's about to get up and speak. Okay, that's what we're at here. Uh, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. So this is the actual performance at this men's conference. And it's very sus, y'all. A man, look, shirt off, on a pole. He lit, literally licks the sword. It shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say. But the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jeze that is the guy, by the way, uh, super inappropriate, the that the was dancing in the church. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one's <clears throat> observation. Now, the pastor of James River Church, pastor, what, John Lindo, he was like, this is his past life 10 years ago. He used to live like, live this lifestyle of being a, a gay performer or whatever. But as I just showed you, well, as I will show you right now, let's do that right now. So this video was literally released over three months ago, just about three months ago, December 28th. And look, he's doing a freaking pose in the Asian religion, I think Buddhism, Hinduism, both. I don't know, but it's not Christian to do that. It's literally worshiping other gods. He's doing this, he's in Bali, to play really quickly, just to give you all some context. Uh, this guy is still not living a Christian lifestyle. Maybe he's saved, maybe he's not. I don't know. But it's very questionable. You know, Christians shouldn't be like doing those poses. Like, what? <laughs> Yo, what was that? Wait, I gotta replay that. I gotta replay that. What is he doing with his feet? Look at that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, he's about to do what? Namaste, bro. Okay. But hey, this is what I believe. Um, Pastor Isaiah Saldivar and uh, Chuck, not Chuck, what's his name? Pastor Mark Driscoll, Pastor Mark Driscoll. They're worse than this guy because they're literal leaders. They're literal teachers. I'm sorry, this is a little bit unorganized, but there's just so much to the situation. And so I got to show you all these different facets. All right, let's get back to Isaiah's video. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an astronaut. The same thing that's used in the strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't know something. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword. So now the pastor speaking up saying this is out of line. So the pastor at this event is saying this is out of line, Mark. And Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Basically getting kicked off stage because pastor, what, John Lindo, he was like, nah, you're getting out of line, you're speaking, you should be doing this in private, this is his excuse, you should, you should rebuke this in private. He said, you're done. So the pastor said, you're out of line, you're done. <laughs> so here's another angle, the pastor gets up. So Mark is walking off the stage, everyone's booing. <laughs> pastor the event gets up. A lot of drama, y'all. Yeah. What? Mark wanted to say that. You should have said it to me first. Ooh. Ooh. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. That's not a Matthew 18 moment. 
And Isaiah is going to agree with that. Watch. But he's being a hypocrite. If your brother offends you, go to him privately. So he's quoting, again, I don't know this pastor, so nothing against him. I'm not here to say he's a false teacher, a false prophet. I don't know his theology, so I don't have the room to say that. He's quoting Matthew 18, which says, if your brother sins against you, go to him privately. Now, the reason why Matthew 18 doesn't apply is because um, this pastor didn't sin against Mark. So it doesn't apply. This pastor actually sinned yeah. against these 8,000 men by allowing an ex-male stripper, a guy ripping his clothes off, literally fueled by a demonic spirit in front of all of these men and young men. And a lady from the church wrote me and said, my young children were there. My husband and I are distraught. We've been crying out all for the last couple of days because of this happened. So people... Yeah, Matthew 18, for those of you guys who don't know, is talking about if your brother sins against you. So this event was literally sinning against the whole audience. And Isaiah is actually speaking truth right here. But he's being a hypocrite. I'm going to show you just in a little bit. Stick around. I'm going to show you how he's being a hypocrite. Here are distraught by what was happening. But Mark did not sin against him. This pastor actually sinned against the body of Christ by allowing this garbage on the pulpit, a holy place. Um, so yeah, Matthew. And I'm going to state the case that Isaiah Saldivar has done the same thing. He sinned against the whole body of Christ by his false teaching. And so let's get to his hypocriticalness. And I'm going to make the same case about Mark Driscoll too, but we're going to start with Isaiah Saldivar. All right. So this is about three years ago but I believe he still has the same beliefs today. He's talking about how to identify this title right here. How do I identify false prophets and false teachers? And in this chapter is called Calling People Out. He explains how it should be done, how it should not be done. To create a ministry where all you do is call people out. Did Paul call people out? Paul called out Demas? He gets so mad, y'all, at the YouTubers such as me who expose false teachers. He, he hates that. Isaiah said he doesn't do that. God doesn't call him to do that. But then he said, that pastor and that church should be rebuked for that poll performance. So he's agreeing that the rebuke should have happened, but now he's saying, anyways. In 2 Timothy 1.15, he said, Demas has deserted me and is in love with the world. Paul called out Phygelus and Hermogenes, Her Hermogenes, I don't know how to say their name, Hermogenes in 2 Timothy 1.15 for turning away from him. He said in 1 Timothy 1.19 that Hymenus and Alexander have shipwrecked the faith. He called out in 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, he called out in 1 Timothy 2.17, Hymenus again and Philetus, who talked about, and said their talk spreads gangrene. So Paul called out, you don't have to write none of those down, remember none of those, at least six false teachers and said, watch out for them. So it is biblical. And Paul said that their, their theology spreads like so that's, that's truth. What he's talking now is truth. Like he's explaining that it is biblical to call out false teachers and false prophets. Paul did it to six false teachers. Gangrene, it's contagious. It's deadly. It causes things to fall off of the body of Christ. But with all false teachers, Satan himself, you know, there's a little bit of truth in there. Like Satan can even use scripture, but then he just misinterprets it. He's the father of lies. So what a lot of false teachers do, they sprinkle in a little bit of truth or maybe even a lot of truth and then makes a little bit of lie in there. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. And so Isaiah is going to come in here with some lies here in a second. Christ. So I don't personally, God has made it very clear to me, Isaiah, don't call people out by name personally. So I don't do that. So he says God told him not to call out people personally. But he's agreeing that that church, John Rivers or James Rivers Church, should have been rebuked. He agrees that that should have happened. But it is a biblical thing to do. But you have to remember this and stay with me here and then I'll give you some more clear. So he's kind of being pretty hypocritical with that just to start. So instead of rebuking and calling out somebody, Isaiah, what he basically does is throw shade. Isaiah out of our throw shade at people who he disagrees with. He just reviewed the video. He's like, this shouldn't happen. They should have be rebuked. The poll situation. And he, has, he said he had a lot to say about it. So he's like not going to rebuke strongly and boldly. But Isaiah is still going to share his opinion. Hypocrite direction. Stay with me. You have to remember the apostle Paul was an apostle and had positioned the church. He was not a Joe Schmo Facebook keyboard warrior trying to go viral. And there are no apostles today. So is he saying that nobody in present day can do rebukes? Is that what he's saying? He's like, apostle Paul did it, but he was an apostle. There's no apostles today. <laughs> by calling everyone out. There's a big difference. He was not doing it for clicks, for views, or for clout. He was doing it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he was not being- So he's he's straw manning. He's saying he, Paul was not doing it for clicks, views, or clout. <laughs> so he's assuming, Isaiah Saldivar is assuming that everybody who calls somebody out is doing it for clicks, views, and clout. Straw man, that's a straw man because not everybody does it for that. Some people do it because they just like the truth. They just like the truth, or they love the truth, and they want to- state the truth. They want to defend the truth. They, don't, they want to defend the gospel. That's a, that's a big reason why I call out false teachers. I want to defend the gospel. The Bible says to contend for the faith. I mean, truth is important in today. So much deception. So somebody can call out and rebuke a false teacher purely because they hate deception. Like, not any bad motives. And I mean, YouTube and social media wasn't even around in Paul's day, so you can't even use that clicks of using clout. That wasn't even around back then.
being nasty about it. Some of you that want to call all these teacher, false teachers out, number one, you're nasty. You're nasty. You're rude. You're sarcastic. You're nasty. You're rude. Sar you're sarcastic. Is sarcasm is sin? I'm going to show y'all a Bible verse in Galatians 5, where Paul was being very sarcastic. And Isaiah would probably even say he was nasty. Paul was being nasty by saying what he said. So we'll start at verse 6. This is talking about other Galatians who are basically preaching to go back to the law of Moses. If you don't stay, stick with the law of Moses, then you're not being a good follower of God. You should go back to the law of Moses. Uh, the new believers, the Gentiles should be circumcised. So that's the that's the issue we're dealing with here. So we'll start at verse 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which work, worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leavens, leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Now, Old English, though, King James, at first I couldn't tell what that meant. But we'll go to a modern Bible version. I really don't like modern Bible versions too much, but just to explain it like in a way you could properly understand because we use modern English, we're going to go to the NIV so you can really see what he's saying here. All right, verse 12, and we're going to zoom in on this because it's very funny, actually, and it's sarcasm. And I, I'm pretty sure Isaiah would say this is, this, is, this is nasty. What Paul said was nasty. Brothers and sisters... If I am preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? He's making a point here. In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, the Galatianizers, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. <laughs> Cut off their junk. Emasculate themselves. Cut off their cojones. <laughs> Yo! Paul wasn't playing around. That, that's some sarcasm. That's some a little bit of rudeness, you, you could say. That's, that's a bit rude to say to somebody. I wish, I wish you'd be emasculated, you Galatianizer. I wish you would emasculate yourself. And if you say that to somebody, <laughs> that, that would, they would take that as very rude. But hey, you know, this is biblical now. This is a biblical. A man of God said that. Is it a sin to be sarcastic or to be a little bit mean to somebody who's actually a false teacher, who's leading people to hell, who's preaching a false gospel, who's taking people away from God, who's preaching the law of Moses when we have a new covenant? Is it a sin to actually be bold and be a little bit mean to that person? As long as you're not sinning, hey, you're not sinning. But it's not wrong to make fun of, to to be sarcastic to, to joke on people who are pre literally preaching a false gospel that leads people to hell. God hates that. It's abominable to do that. All right, so let's go back to what you say. You're just, uh, you're just nasty. And number two, who are uh, you? I guess Paul was nasty then. <laughs> you don't have a following. You've done nothing. Oh, here we go. The next, the next, just he's being nasty right here. We're gonna show you how Isaiah himself is sinning by what he's about to say. For God, you're not an apostle. You're not even in a. Church. Let's rewind that. Church number two, who are you? You don't. Have who are you? Who are you? You don't have any status. You don't have a following. He's literally gonna say that. The following, you've done nothing for God. You're not an apostle. Wow. So you're not even. He's literally boasting in his own works. You've done nothing for God. So apparently, Isaiah is doing everything for God. He has a following. <laughs> so he's the one that has authority because he has a following. He's done all these good works for God. In a church, you're some guy living in your, your basement somewhere. Literally, I watched two videos. Oh, no, so every poor person Isaiah thinks is a nobody. Okay. Two weeks ago. Of guys on YouTube, don't don't waste your time finding them because they have like 50 views on them trying to call me out for believing in deliverance and believing. Oh, he's he's actually a clout chaser. He's a clout chaser. You can tell by how he's talking. What comes out of the mouth is literally revealing his heart right here. You only have 50 views. You don't have any say so in anything. You're not doing anything for God. You're living in your mama's basement. You're a nobody. That's what he's saying. You don't have any clout. TV miracles and just dumb stuff. And both of them, number one, looked like they were filming from a basement, but both both of them are doing nothing for God. I mean, I'm looking at their pedigree. I'm going, you've done nothing. You have no fruit and you've done nothing for God. So why are you going to jump on here and try boastful, prideful devil right here? Now I'm going to show you the major sin that he's committing right here. The sin of partiality. James 2 actually speaks against this. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. God is not a respecter of persons, but partiality. 
God doesn't show partiality. Partiality is being a respecter of persons. It's treating somebody differently, people differently based on their status in life, based on their title or their income, how much clout they have, stuff like that. For if there come unto you, you are simply a man with a gold ring. We're talking about a rich man. In goodly apparel, dressed in nice. And there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit under my footstool. Hey, this, this person is treating these people differently based on their status in life, which Isaiah is doing. Oh, you only have 50 views. Uh, you're staying at your mom's house. Uh, you don't have a following. You're not doing all these good things. You don't have the status. So he's literally sitting by what he just explained. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? Hallelujah. And heirs of the kingdom, which ye have promised to them that love him. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the judgment seats? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, you commit sin. Respect a person's. You commit sin, which Isaiah Sadovar does all the time. So basically what I'm trying to show you is how Isaiah gets mad when people call him out and judge them because they don't have a following. They don't have the status he has. They don't have the income and the wealth he has. They don't have the influence he has. But then when a situation comes up like this with the man in a pole with the shirt off swallowing a sword, he'll judge that. He'll say, yeah, that rebuke was necessary. He, he'll say, yeah, they were in the wrong. They were in the wrong. And so he's doing basically the same thing that he gets mad at other people for doing. And yet, which I haven't even got to, he preaches a false gospel himself. So why are people calling out Isaiah Saldivar? For many different reasons, but I have a good one. He literally preaches against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So the Bible separates works from faith. They're not the same thing. They're different things. And we're saved not of works, not by what we do. Because if we're saved by what we do, then we can boast. Now listen to what Isaiah says. Totally contradicts this. And do you see the title? God told me some Christians will go to hell. Ain't going to be no Christian in hell. No real Christian. It's about action. Some Christians will go to everlasting punishment because they neglected the action. They did not do anything. Whoa. <laughs> did I just, do you remember what I just said? <laughs> do you remember what I just said? We're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Let's any man should boast. Work is action. Isaiah said, it's about action. Some Christians will find themselves in hell because they did not do anything. Literally preaching against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's rewind that one more time. It's about action. Some Christians will go to everlasting punishment. Because they neglected the action. They did not do anything. That's what this is about. Are we doing something? Do we know God? No, that is not what the gospel is about. This wicked, satanic serpent. <laughs> okay, look at this man's face. He's literally worse. Look at this man. I'm not going to you know, make fun of his physical appearance, but you can just tell the devil is in his eyes. Look at Satan. Say, you staring at Satan right now. Look, Satan is in this man's eyes. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let me tell you how this man is worse than the guy, the sus guy swallowing the sword, right? That guy may be sus. He may be doing some Buddhist meditation, whatever he's doing, but is he literally creating children of hell? with false teaching and leading people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't even think that guy's a teacher. I just think he does performances. I don't think he teaches. I mean, maybe somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but Isaiah has a big influence leading many people away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So to me, people like Isaiah Sadovar is way worse than the Alex Magog, whatever his name is, Alex guy. And Mark Driscoll, we're going to get to his He's got the same belief about the gospel, the same belief. We're going to show you that now. So this is Mark Driscoll. And I searched in gospel, Mark Driscoll, and this came up. Pretty short video. I just wanted to see what he believed about the gospel. So let's hear what he believes. 
The point is, some young Christians would say, well, we don't need to just tell everybody about Jesus. We just need to love people. We need to serve people. We need to do good works and social justice, and we just need to bless people. No, no, no. Good works will help people, but only good news will save people. Amen. And the God Okay, so he seems to be teaching the right so far, which a lot of people do this. They, they sound good at first, and then they completely just, they're double-minded. The double, they say one good thing and then completely contradict it. So he's saying good works do not save you. The gospel says, okay, cool. Let's, let's continue. Gospel is nothing that we can show because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. The gospel is nothing you can show because it's not about us. Okay, we're still good. Jesus, it's not about what we do for others. It's about what he does for us. Okay, amen, amen. All right. So the gospel is this. Jesus Christ is God. He lived without sin. He died on the cross yeah. for your sin. He Amen. rose from the dead to conquer death and forgive sin. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And unless you repent of sin or turn from sin and trust in him. Whoa. <laughs> Repentance of sin. Unless you repent of sin and, and turn away from your sin and trust in him. And that's a complete contradiction. Repentance of sin is a work. Is a work. You do not have eternal life. Ooh. Unless you turn from sin, you do not have eternal life. Let's rewind that. He lived without sin. He died on the cross for your sin. He rose from the dead to conquer death and forgive sin, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And unless you repent of sin or turn from sin and trust in him, you do not have eternal life. I okay. Unless you turn away from sin, then you not, do not have eternal life. He just contradicted his whole previous statements that salvation is not good works. It's not about what you do. It's about what God done for you. But unless you turn away from sin, and I'm going to prove to you how it is a work. Jonah 3.10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. All right. So God saw some people in the Old Testament. They turned from their sins. Look, look. They turned from their evil. They turned from their sins. They repented of their sins. They turned from their evil way. And that's what people mean when they say repentant sins. They basically say it means to turn from sins, turn from your evil way. God calls it a work. That's what God calls it. And God saw their works. What was the works? That they turned from their evil way. And God actually repented. A lot of people think repentance, it automatically means turn from sin. It does not. Because God repented. He can't sin. Repentance, all that means is a change of mind. Just a change of mind. And to be saved, you have to change your mind from unbelief to belief, to belief in the gospel, which is what? God put on flesh. He was Jesus Christ. He died on a cross, shed his blood for the remission of sins, was buried, was resurrected on the third day. And if we trust in him and he resurrected with all power in his hands, hallelujah, then we are saved. That is the gospel. It's nothing that you do. No work that you do. No turning from sins. Again, turning from sin is a work. And God saw their what? Their works. What did they do? They turned from their sins, their evil way. And then God repent. Again, he doesn't sin. It can't mean to turn from sins. This is what all these false teachers say. So many in the church. It's so deceptive. All these works based salvationists, Isaiah Saldivar, Mark Driscoll. And this is why these people are hypocrites, false teachers calling out other false teachers. Yes, it was wicked to have that man that was in sexual immorality and not living a godly lifestyle to take off his shirt, do a sexual act. He literally licked the sword. He licked the sword, all, licked it all up and down or whatever he did, climbed on that pole, did some acrobat acrobatic stuff and all that. He did that wicked, sus, just blasphemous stuff in the church. And uh, what's his name? John, what's his name? What's his name? And this guy, John Lindo, basically get, gave all that the okay. He was in the wrong for allowing that. But who is worse? Somebody preaching a false gospel that literally sends people to hell creates twofold a child of hell. What's worse? I think, I think leading people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ is worse. It is worse. I mean, hell is much worse than anything on this earth. So if you're a teacher that has a major influence leading thousands of people to hell, or just making them afraid. Maybe they're already saved, but you're literally causing babes in Christ, newly saved people in Christ to constantly live in fear. Am I really saved? Am I really saved? Am I going to heaven or hell? This is what Isaiah Saldivar and people like him and Mark Driscoll are doing. Causing people to question their salvation. Causing babes in Christ to live in fear. Oh, am I going to make it? I just sinned today. I just sinned today. Isaiah Saldivar, in that video I showed you earlier... He was like, if you don't do these works, then you might end up in hell. There's going to be Christians in hell who didn't do, didn't take action, didn't take the actions. It's not about that. It's good. You should, 
you should do good works. What does Ephesians chapter 2 verses 10 say? And a lot of people straw man me. They say, oh, you're saying that people can just live in sin? You, you, you're you wanting people to sin? No, 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 no. You should do good works. You should. That's what the scripture says in verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. That you should walk in good works. Not walking in good works is going to cause a lot of issues. But it, what it will not do, it will not send you to hell because we're not saved by what we do or what we don't do. We're saved by what we believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is the gospel. These people are hypocrites. They are false teachers calling out other false teachers. Whoops calling out whoops. whoop de doo This is what we're in in the church in 2024. Read the Bible for yourself. Believe, have faith in Christ and Christ alone for your salvation. Because that's all that it takes. That is what it requires to actually make it into the heavenly gates. Because Matthew 7, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. Didn't I do all these mighty works in your name? And the Lord will say, depart from me, you who work iniquity and lawlessness. Why does the Lord say that to them? When they did all these mighty works, because works did not save that person. They're literally boasting in that works. When Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 says, lest any man should boast. And that is precisely why we are not saved by works. If we were saved by works, then we could boast in our salvation. But we have nothing to do with it. So the person saying, Lord, Lord, I did all these mighty works in your name. Cast out all these demons. I did all these mighty things in your name. He will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Why are they workers of iniquity? They were never justified. They were never seen righteous in the eyes of God because they never truly believed. They did all these nice things. They served God in different ways, but they never truly believed. Many people will use Matthew 7 in the wrong way to attack what I believe. Oh, there's going to be Christians there who are living in sin, and therefore they're not going to make it to heaven because they were living in sin. Sin does not take you to hell once you truly believe. You are sealed and sanctified and secure until the day of redemption. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit seal, the promised redemption. Hallelujah. You are sealed forever. Once saved, always saved. We have eternal life, everlasting life. You can't lose and you can't walk away from that which you received that is everlasting and eternal. It's impossible. You're stuck with that. You can't lose that. You can't walk away from that. You can't break God's seal. Are you stronger than God? You can't break that. They crazy. Matthew 7 is talking about the unbelievers who were never forgiven of their sins. Matthew 7 says, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have God living inside of you. If you have God living inside of you, God knows you. But God never knew these people who he said to depart from me. He never knew them because they never had the Holy Spirit. They never believed. You get the Holy Spirit once you believe on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you always, saints. Continue to believe. Continue to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not until your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Amen.